Oh, it's alive now, so let's get started. Yeah, so the talk is titled Fantastic Layouts and Where to Find Them, and I present you Michael Abente. It's Martin. Oh, sorry, Martin Abente. I have sorry. nothing against that name. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, good morning, everyone, and I'm um, glad to see you here. Um, thank you for coming. Um, well, I'm, my name is Martin, and I work for Endless. I uh, developed the, um, um, what we call the modular framework. Um, before of that, I work for um, I work with and uh, with OBC with OBC and for Sugar Lab for uh, like seven years. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, so if you attended to the previous uh, endless talk during this, what you have heard that we are working really really hard to provide a lot of uh, offline apps, but it's not only about uh, um, quantity; it's about quality, right? And quality is composed of a lot of very little details, like um, how do you present, like preview, uh, highlighted articles from the English version of the travel app, for example. Um, and yeah, if I wanted to uh, implement this in GTK, I would probably think, oh, this is so easy, right? Um, this is a box, another box, another box, another box, right? Many boxes. And you think that would work, right? But it doesn't. <laughs> Um, it doesn't work as you expected because uh, you can have other restrictions like a specific size uh, for every of these uh, preview widgets, right? And what if you have to do something like this? Boxes? No. Um, if you try, I don't know, with whatever else you have, uh, I, I can tell you, it's, it's not going to work. So um, let me tell you how we used to do it and how we fail. <laughs> um, okay, so what we usually will do is just create like a layout widget Right, for every different type of layout that we were, um, we actually call this arrangement, but yeah, let's simplify the terminology. Um, and for every uh, child of these, we would just, you know, create a custom um, allocation and just, you know, st stuck it inside of it. But as many of you uh, already know, we make GDK verbosely. Uh, um, Nervous? <laughs> yes, and um, I think we, go, uh, go, we were going like completely against of how everything should work. Um, but if we step back just a little bit um, on the technical uh, part of this issue, there's, there's another issue. And um, yes, to the left you see how designers imagine this and how they, you know, they would create like a mock-up for this. And then to the right, you see how a programmer would implement this. And I think it's pretty easy to realize that the languages in which they are implemented are completely uh, difficult um, to understand each other, right? I mean, there's like a translation cost. And also there's a, a, like a real limitation because uh, you cannot really uh, ask, I mean, it would be great, right? But you cannot really ask a designer to read this to see if it's exactly what he wants. So. Uh, yeah, the design and development language are completely off. Okay. So for this, um, we created MAOs, which is a constraint-based uh, layout manager and a container widget for GTK. Um, it is based on the Casuari, uh, yeah, Emmanuel can correct me, but Casuari uh, constraint solving algorithm. I have no idea how to pronounce it properly, but um, I speak Spanish, by the way. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's been released under uh, LGPL. And it was mostly, and when I say mostly, it's like 99, 99% by uh, Emanuele, with some contributions from others, like me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, le let me show you how, how it looks. Um, yeah, I'm using um, GGAs because that's what I use. And um, yeah, so I highlighted the two important things that you need to look at this, uh, which is basically the constraint layout. That's the container widget. And with, as with any other uh, container, you, you just add uh, widgets to it. But if you want you know, to determine how this uh, layout is going to look, you need to fit the um, layout with the uh, constraints. And how does, uh, okay, how, I mean, wh what is a constraint? Yeah, so le let me tell you at least how it looks in MLs. Um So basically, these are like the different uh, properties that define a constraint. You have a target, target object with the attribute, a relationship to another um, object, which is the source object, and it's attribute, a multiplier constant, and a strength. 
Um, so if you read this, you know, like in a natural language, you will say that you want to, uh, yeah, you want the left edge of the bottom one to be exactly the same as the um, left edge of the layout, right? And that's not negotiable because it says uh, the string is really, really um, much. Well, anyway, um, these are the different um, 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 attributes that you can uh, um, play with. And yeah, the different relationships and the different strings. So um, just to, I'm not gonna go into much detail about um, how the, um, the the algorithm works, but let's say that these uh, um, the strength uh, uh, property is used just to um, solve uh, um, conflicts between different uh, constraints. So it will give more uh, priority to the stronger one. Okay, and y as you can see, there's a, lo a lot of uh, different uh, um, different uh, properties. And this is actually very um, powerful. Um, okay, <laughs> let's start with something not so fantastic. <laughs> yeah, sorry for the uh, <laughs> click the name. Um, I want to show you um, this thing um, actually running. So let's see how it, uh, how it works. Um, let me try to uh, describe this. So it's just uh, button one, button two, uh, one to the left, another to the right, and they seem to uh, uh, maintain the same um, dimensions. Um, let's look at the code. Uh -huh. Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, to get this to work, um, we use around eight constraints. But of course, I'm not gonna read this. I'm gonna just uh, explain this in a different way. Um, so yeah, let me explain the eight um, constraints to see more or less how this works. So the first constraint uh, is basically saying I want the left edge of the bottom one to be uh, the same one as the left edge of the layout. And the same thing for the top and the same thing for the bottom. And then for the bottom, bottom two, um, we want the left edge of the um, bottom two to be the same as the right edge of the bottom one. And then the same thing for the top and the same thing for the bottom, and then an extra one, which I uh, can imagine you already um, can figure out, but <laughs> um, yeah, we are just saying that the left, the right edge of the bottom two is the same as the right edge of the uh, layout. And one extra one saying that we want the, the width of the bottom two to be the exact same as the uh, width of the bottom one, okay? Um, so um, let me, play with this example uh, just a little bit. So if I modify this uh, here, uh -huh. sorry, um, let me run this again. So now is the button two is uh, twice the size of the uh, bottom one, okay? Um, let me see, yeah, okay, I'm back. Um, so at this point, yeah, and taking into account my horrible translation, <laughs> um, I think it's easy to tell that the language that I'm using to describe how the, uh, the layout is gonna look, it's a lot more similar to natural language, a little bit more. I mean, yeah, put into perspective because I'm comparing with the uh, previous code that I showed before. Um, but yeah, I may also provides other things that make it even easier to, uh, to create this sort of uh, layout. So um, it also provides something called, uh, support something called the VFL, Visual, Visual uh, Format Language, which um, I think was created by Apple for the um, auto layout um, UI designing tool. And yeah, let me read that for you because this is, this is the exact same code, but I just removed the, uh, the constraints like I made manually and I'm just using the uh, um, this helper from emails just to, uh, to use this. So what he's saying is uh, if you look at this layout like horizontally, I hope that word exists, um, it says we have the uh, uh, left edge of the uh, layout and next to it we have the bottom one and next to it we have the bottom two, which by the way, the width, <laughs> it should be the exact uh, same as the, uh, the bottom one uh, width and next to the right edge of the, um, yeah, of the layout. 
So if you see, it's like a direct uh, transcription of what you see in the screen. So you started like um, left, uh, I started like left to right, describing um, how it looks um, horizontally. And then for the vertical, um, vertically, yeah, you have the, the, the top edge, and then next to it I have the bottom one, and next to it I have the, um, the bottom. And the same thing goes for the, the bottom two, so I'm gonna repeat myself. Um, so this is like a lot simpler. And uh, let me show you, like, because, you know, like, I'm not lying, so. Um, uh, let me show you, like, the diff. Uh, yes, this is, like, like, the real diff between the two examples. So I just literally remove all the, um, <laughs> all the constraints that I made manually and just added this thing, okay? So, yeah, now we are safe. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> nothing too fantastic, but. Yeah, it behaves the same, and and I think that was a lot easier to 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 understand. Um, let me see what else. Oh, nope. Okay, but simplicity comes uh, with a cost, because the um, there are things that you can uh, express using the uh, constraints API. Let's call it for now, which is just using directly the the, the emails API, um, creating constraints yourself. Um, there are things that this cannot express. Like this is a limited uh, um, language. It's a, like a domain-specific language. It has limitations, <coughs> and we already, as is, yeah, we have extended this just a little bit, <laughs> not too much. Um, but uh, there are other things that we could add, but we probably won't in the near future, at least. Um, but yeah, the thing is that what we talked about um, um, previously, right? The the that huge distance between what the designers um, talk and what the programmers talk. I mean, with something like this, you get like a real middle ground because this is, this is actually something that they can understand and we can understand. So we can talk the same languages. So theoretically, uh, translation cost is gone. <laughs> yeah, the asterisk is there. So, um, okay, let's switch to something a little more fantastic at least, uh, at least good looking. I mean, not to be pretentious. Um, quick story. So uh, months ago, I was working on integrating uh, MAOs into the um, modular framework. Um, so I asked, one on, uh, I asked Joanna, which is one of our designers, like, okay, I need something, you know, wild, crazy. I need, to, I need something different, something, you know, I want to put this to test, right? And she sent me this. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, okay, what I did is I just put this image like in, a, in like a, a secondary screen, and I uh, open a tool called Emails Editor, which I'm not going to show that right now, but it's basically a way to prototype in things. Um, so what I did was I kind of scanned the, um, the layout, like in the same way that a DFL works, right? I scanned from left to right and bottom, yeah, and top to bottom. And as I was doing that, I, was, like, I, was, I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just uh, transcribing, right? Transcribing what I was seeing. I was not really you know, oh, thinking about anything at the moment. I was like, oh, let's see how this works, right? So this is how uh, I end up with, <laughs> which is uh, nine lines of code. Whether or not you can uh, understand it right now, that's only circumstantial. <laughs> but, I mean, if you ask me, I would probably won't understand it as well, because I did it in the moment when I was transcribing that thing, and this is just like a, yeah, it's a, a transcript. So let me, um, let me show you how this looks in, uh, in a real lab. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, this is, uh, this is the same app that I showed before, the English travel app. But I just modify one line of uh, YAML file, so you would use uh, this uh, layout instead, right? We'll call it arrangement, but yes, let's stick with the layout term. And <laughs> I mean, honestly, it looks like really good. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, I mean, considering the effort it took me to get to this point, I was like, I, I, had, I, I don't want to be like, I don't want to exaggerate, right? But I, I had like a revelation moment. That, uh, I was like, oh, wow. I mean, I didn't even have to think about this, and I got it right. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, there were some typos that I had to fix, but uh, there's always a, a typo. Um, 
But th this um, really uh, made me realize that th this was actually something with a lot of potential and really a uh, powerful tool um, that we, st we actually still need to um, use it more, right? But um, let me go back to the presentation, just quick review. Yeah, everything is in place. Okay, so um, another example, a little, um, a little better, in my opinion, that's subjective. Um, so in, this is something I wrote this week um, during my 26, 20, yeah, 26 uh, hour flight from Paraguay to Manchester. So I had the time. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you recognize it, but this is, uh, at least this is how I call it. I call it the, the, the Pinterest layout. You know, if you ever use Pinterest, it's, it looks somewhat like this, okay? And, <laughs> and we really, really tried to get this uh, like in the framework uh, before, but you know, like we got busy with other stuff and we couldn't do it. So um, let me show you, um, let me show you how it works and I'll explain the, uh, um, the constraints. Believe it or not, we will have the time to do that. Um, so, okay, so I'm gonna add a bunch of uh, images. <laughs> uh, so someone needs to tell me when to stop. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah. We're looking at this, and yeah, the, the more different these images are, like you see, like the more you see the pattern, right? Like it's like all irregular and you know, super stylish. Like I'm not a designer, but I, I trust uh, the judgment of whoever designed this or originally, right? Um, <laughs> okay, um, and but as a programmer, the the thing that actually you know makes me kind of happy of this uh, code is the fact that it's really, really simple. I mean, the layout part of it. <laughs> um, so let me show you how it looks. Uh, yes, so believe it or not, um, to implement this layout, you just need three uh, constraints per image. Uh, let's not get too greedy, but yeah, it's three per image. And let me explain it how, how it works. Um, yes, so. Three constraints. The first one is one of these two, depending on the uh, uh, the situation. If it's the first row, right, then the uh, you you the um, the constraint would be like um, the top edge of the image should be the same as the top edge of the la layout, right? But if it's not, the top edge of the image should be the bottom edge of the image that is on top of it. Okay, that's the first rule. Um, the second, yeah, again, depending on the column. If it's the first column, then um, you say that you want to make the uh, left edge of the image the same as the left edge of the layout. But if not, you said the left edge of the image is the right, F of, uh, right edge of the, uh, of, of the previous image. And finally, um, you say that the width of the uh, image should be um, the same as the width of the layout divided by the number of columns. And that's it. Like, if you don't believe me, like, I, I will show the code. You. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's right there, you know, like, one divided these columns. See, it's real. <laughs> um, so let me show you something else. So let's go back to the example there because there's something else I want to show you. Because of the way I, uh, I define those uh, constraints. Someone needs to tell me when to stop. <laughs> Thank you. So if I maximize this, yep. Because always the width of the images is the same as the layout width divided by the number of columns, okay? It's pretty, pretty simple actually and you know, it's kind of cool. I actually, I, I don't know if I mentioned it before but I, I started this example because I, wanted to actually show how the scrolling board, but then I end up with this and it was a lot cooler. So I completely forgot about the other example, <laughs> but <laughs> okay, two for one. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, I think we're good on, on time, right? Like uh, it's like 10 minutes maybe? In my head, no. <laughs> how much is it? Okay, great, great. So what's next for Eneos? Um, 
This is not in particular order, or maybe it is, but better API. So what if we could have the, um, the same, you know, something easy to use like the VFL, and at the same time, as powerful as the constraints API, right? The holy grail of API. Um, but <laughs> actually, I think Emanuele has good ideas about that, so it's not like just crazy talk. Um, other things we need are responsive features, um, because let me try to explain this. So there are many situations where we actually want to modify the layout, which means modifying the, uh, the constraints. So for example, I don't know, maybe one arrangement that looks good in a super high resolution screen might not fit in into a smaller one. So we need, right, right, yeah, you could just, yeah. And yeah, we need some sort of conditional constraint, right? some sort of logic where you can say, if this happens, then uh, disable this or enable this or do something with this, right? <coughs> Uh, and I'm talking about constraints. And then I use the word better here, but I mean, we need UI. <laughs> it's not like better UI, we need UI. And whether it's in non-build or Glade or I don't know, your own tool inside here, um, <laughs> yeah, it needs to happen. I mean, um, and I think the idea was like, it's not like we want, you know, like another BFL editor. We actually want something that you can design and will like magically generate the constraint for you. That's more or less the idea. And then, yeah, this is something that was uh, mentioned during the, uh, the London Hackfest. And it was to basically just use um, MAOs as a backend engine for like all the layouts in GTK because it performs better, so why not? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's it. Questions? Uh, oh my, yes. Uh, so Interface Builder on the Mac has sort of a similar thing going on with the, the uh -huh. pretty much the same algorithm and uh, yes. everything. Um, they load constraints from an XML file, which uh, they have massaged over the years. But um, I was wondering if it was possible to do the same here, if you could load it constraints from uh, external resources. Um, um, yes, GTK Builder. Okay, I was going to. That's that's my specific question. Was was it compatible with GTK Builder? Yes, yes, it, it is. Yes. I, I mean, I mean, like, I, honestly, no, nobody uses it yet, right? I mean, like, no. But but uh, yes, it's already supported. Cool. Um, what's your color? There's a, just supposed to have a color here, and I'm supposed to give you points. So let's let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your color again? Okay. I, I was promised that someone would take notes for me because yeah. it doesn't work like that for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, green, great. It's, it's my own house, so let's do this. Um, any other question? Yes, yeah. So you showed two ways to add constraints. Well, one is uh, VFL and the other one is uh, like variables. Um, and you used VFL to describe the whole UI, but um, what if you want to add a constraint later in the code? Can you use VFL for that too? I mean, the answer is you can, but it's super, super ugly. Because, uh, I, mean, I mean, you literally can, because at the, I mean, if you, I'll show you the code. Uh, yeah, here. So at the end, you know that this uh, constraint list, at the end, it's basically the same thing. Um, this uh, constraint from the description helper basically just interprets this, right, parse this, and just spits a lot of uh, constraints. So at the end, you end up with the same thing. So um, you, could, you could use it, you know, and then, you know, to express it like simpler if you want, and then get the constraints, and then do the same thing as I was doing with this example. Because here, like, I was adding like one image at a time, right? So I like, I build this, uh, I, desc yeah, I build this uh, set of constraints in a way that you can just keep, you know, putting things into the system, and it will be consistent. So, <laughs> but yeah, the answer is yes. Um, any other question? Oh, your color, sorry. Oh my God. Okay. What happens if the programmer specifies impossible constraints? Well, it won't do nothing. Like, it <laughs> it's gonna complain. Uh, in the, at the best, in best case, it's gonna complain about it. Worst case scenario, nothing is gonna happen. Like you won't see anything happen. That, that's the that's the most honest answer you will get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but it won't crash under these circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, there's another question. Um, yeah, your color, please. Okay. Someone's taking note for me, so I trust you, whoever you are. <laughs> if there's a few minutes left, could we see the VFL editor? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Why? <laughs> Just to... Uh, Just to humiliate you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> There's not that that much time left, so if you could just rush through it, um, because um, as in don't get into the before details. Before we leave, yeah, before we leave, I don't want to steal like um, um, just really quick. Uh, I'm almost done. I swear. Yes, go here, download it, use it, break it. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. <laughs> um,